Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today I've got a very important video for both new players and veterans alike. And that is, I really want to kind of make this guide about how to utilize this current event that we have going on in game, where we have a global event running every week for four weeks in a row, which is the first time that's ever happened in Division's history. That's unprecedented to have that long of a, a period of global events going on where you can take advantage of those rewards you can get. And I want to explain how you can utilize that and the types of activities and builds you can use in the game to take advantage of that in order to propel yourself to be much better prepared for the new update coming next year um, for the Division 2 in 2022. Because as we know with the new expertise system, uh, you're going to have to really get your grind on once that update starts to start uh, leveling up all your gear, all the different types of gear and skills in the game, even, even the ones you don't use, if you want to get the maximum value out of the system to where you can upgrade, you know, to the highest possible level. But the one important thing that they said in that article was that you have alternate methods to level up, um, you know, pieces of gear that maybe you don't like to use. Let's say you don't like to use the AKM. Well, instead of running that, you know, in the game and having to spend time with it, what you can do is donate materials to upgrade its proficiency level and get it closer to maxing out that proficiency. And then you're done with that one. You can move on to the next thing. Well, what if I told you that right now you can go in and start preparing for that in such a way that when that update drops in 2022, you can have enough things saved up to where you might not even have to run the majority of the things in the game. Again, we don't know how much materials it's going to take right now, but what I'm saying is, and I'm going to explain this throughout the video, there's a way you can prepare right now where you can just dump materials in the second the update goes live and have enough backstock to be able to just keep pumping it into each item, and there's a chance you're not going to have to do that much grinding when the update drops. And you can be pretty close to maxing out your expertise stuff the moment that update goes live. And that's what I want to talk about today. Now you might be thinking, what the hell am I talking about? All right, we're going to break this into a few different parts. But first, what I want to do is just show you the um, basic idea of what we're going for here. And this could be done with anything in the game. The best way you're going to be able to do this is during this event with this different or with this specific build and activity that I'm about to show you. But in general, if you want to do this even after the event ends, the basic idea is that you're going to want to go in and level up your scavenging here in your watch as far as you can. Now, if you're not shade level 1000, you are going to have to get to that first. But you can also do that through this uh, method because you're just needing XP, right? So no matter where you are at in the game, again, if you're just starting, if you're a veteran, whatever you're doing, you can take part in this and get ready for that update in 2022 to hopefully get a big head start when that expertise system goes live. So basically all you're trying to do is get your scavenging here as high as you can because the idea is, <clears throat> let's say that... Um, to get one proficiency rank on a gun in the new update is going to take 500 ceramics and 500 or and 250 electronics, right? When, when you want to do that instead of using it to get that experience, running it in activities. Well, what you can do is you donate that 500 and that 250 and say you do that for a few things. Well, pretty soon you're going to run out. Right, But what you can do is if you save up, like I have 385 scavenging levels and I'm just getting started. Like we're going to keep going on this for months and months. I can just dump a few points in there and before you know it, I'll be back a bit the full capacity. And so my point is the, we, again, we don't know the values for the materials that it'll take to upgrade these things. But in theory, you could rank this up enough to where you might have to barely do any work because you can just keep pumping these points into the materials once they deplete from you donating them, and just the cycle continues and you move through the library of the things you need to level up. So again, you can achieve this by doing anything in the game and getting experience to level up your watch. But what I'm gonna do now is move on to the specific um, farming guide that is going to get you the most, you know, bang for your buck and time on your money um, during this update. Because if we go in the season calendar here, you'll see right now that on the first day of this update, SHD exposed as the global event and has six days left. After that, Golden Bullet begins right away. After that, Reanimated begins right away. And after that, Hollywood begins right away. And while you can do this farm at any time, even after these end, the nice thing about that with pairing it with these global events is that you can turn those on and get double the benefit because not only are you getting the experience, but you can also then get stars from that. Obviously, we had the star vendor for any global event. And then you can spend it on whatever you want here. And my recommendation would be optimization caches. I'm going to bet that the majority of you do not have those uh, resources maxed out. I certainly do not. I have 27 out of 500 SHD calibration. And so what you can do 
is just do this infinitely, keep getting stars, because you get one every time you level up, and then just keep buying optimization caches and keep pumping these up as much as you can. If you want to spend these now, you can to level up your gear or just hoard 500 of each thing or 250, whatever the cap is on each one. And then when the update drops and you find the build you want and you max out its expertise level and you upgrade its grade, then you can optimize it. Like there's just so many synergies you can take advantage of in this month we have right now with this event going on. Um, and that's really what I want to explain to everyone today. So at this point, some veterans might... Um, want to tune out because the the activity that I'm going to be explaining is of course resource convoys which I'm sure some of you have at least heard of um, they're basically the best way to, to quickly level up in the game this is what I used to do back in the day when the seasons were coming around for the first time this is how you would get level 100 in like the first day is just by doing these um, and so let's just get to it if you've already heard of that then that is basically what I'm going to describe here how to do those and the right build to use with it um, with the particular directives, and that's going to give you the most XP um, to be able to level up as fast as possible. So if you've already heard that, then feel free to tune out. Uh, but if not, then let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do before you start going for these is to open your map, like I'm in right now, and on Xbox it is right on the D-pad, and you want to go to Global Difficulty. Now set this to whatever you're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with Heroic. If you are, then that is obviously the best thing to do because you're going to get the most um, XP right? The most base XP. Um, so if you're comfortable with heroic set at that, if not, challenging works as well. For the directives, you're going to want to turn on Fog of War. Fragile Armor is up to you. I absolutely despise Fragile Armor, so I will take the 25% XP loss just to not have to deal with it. Um, if you can stand it, then turn that on, but do Pistol Arrow, Scavenge Skills, and Special Ammo, at least those four, and the fifth one is optional. And then once you lock all those in, confirm settings, and it's going to apply those changes. Then what you want to do is come out of here and make sure that whichever, you know, whenever you watch this, whichever global event may be active at the time, you want to make sure you go in and turn that on because by default they are turned off. So you want to go into it and you can see down at the corner or down the middle rather, if I hit X, it activates it and then the global event will be on and I can start earning those stars to spend at that um, star cash vendor at the base of operations. And then before I give you a rundown of the activity, I want to give you my recommendation for what build to use. The most important thing to recognize here is that we are running Pistolero, which heavily reduces your uh, ammo acquisition for anything other than pistols, which obviously have infinite ammo. And so if you want to build recommendation, this is what I run. I did this on stream plenty of times back when the, the last global event was on. Um, and it's a really easy way to take advantage of these directives, not make it too hard on yourself and just get that XP. So the basic idea is you want to use high damage pistol. If you have the Regulus, that is the best option in my opinion um, for the amount of damage you can get from those headshot kills. But if not, then do the Liberty. Um, everyone can get that. That's not a raid locked one. You can just get that from any uh, targeted pistol zone if you need to go and farm it. If you really don't have either of those, just a regular high end D50 will work as well. Um, but ideally the Liberty or the Regulus uh, because of their talents. So you want that. And then you're basically just build, uh, basing the rest of the build around that. So you can change this up, you know, a fair bit to how you want to do it. I have the full shield, uh, which is also, you know, what you're going to want. And I have tier three because I have two armor cores and then I'm running the technician specialization for a third uh, skill tier. And so, and that's been plenty fine for me in heroic content. If you want to go higher than that, you can, but I also like to have a good bit of damage so that I'm not letting these ads linger too much. Um, and then basically I just have, you know, the punch drunk to get that extra headshot damage with the pistol damage brand bonus. Um, one piece of providence for headshot damage. I got the two best in slot damage pieces, contractors and foxes. Just a little bit of extra crit chance there. Um, and then I'm doing adrenaline rush and intimidate, which you don't have to do. There are plenty of other options you can do as well. Uh, but it's just kind of nice for this, um, you know, setup with the shield just to get in their face, pop those headshots, get in, get out. That's basically the idea here. Like I said, you can change this up quite a bit, but the idea is when you're running Pistolero specifically, that directive, you're going to want a good pistol, full shield, uh, probably a Revive Hive 2, because you're getting up, you know, in their face in pretty dangerous circumstances, and then just build the build around that. Feel free to copy my template or make your own. All right, now that we have all that down, we are ready to move on to the actual activity themselves. Now, again, many of you may have seen these before, I'm sure if you played the game before, but if not, if you're a newer player, I want to give you the rundown. Um just so that you can get an idea of what the most efficient farm is. There, like I said, anything in the game that gives you XP is going to work. But with these directives, with Heroic, these are the best things to farm as, as far as your time goes and as far as XP per challenge of the activity goes. So right now I don't see any active. Basically you're looking for something like this, but there are uh, more boxes that are traveling and you see the lines. So I'm going to wait for one to spawn and then I'll come back and, uh, and let you guys know 
the next steps. All right, so here we are just a few moments later, and now you can see that a few of these resource convoy activities have indeed spawned. You hover over them, you see resource convoy, and it shows you the line and the direction and the path they're going to take to get to their destination. They travel between control points, so if you're having trouble getting them to spawn, then make sure you reset your control points so that they're all hostile on the map, um, and that'll increase your chances of having them show up. Now, after you do this for a while, you get used to the certain spawn locations of, like, if this one is here, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to wait for it to get to this intersection because I know they'll spawn out of an easy door. Like, you get, <laughs> when you start doing them for as long as I have, you'll get that kind of information. Um, and the basic idea is you go and clear one, and then let's say this one was still up, you go and jump to the next. Like, you, you go fast. Right. Once you get into the rhythm of it, that's how you get the most XP going. That's the most efficient way to do it. Um, but for now, I'm just going to show you one of them just so you can get an idea of what the the moment to moment gameplay is. So let's head for this one over here. Now, to be honest, I don't usually encounter them on this road, so I'm not entirely sure where they're going to spawn, but we're going to see and uh, have a good time with it. One important thing to note is that the minute uh, gameplay details here might differ depending on when you do this, because right now the SHD exposed uh, is the global event that is active. And obviously it differs if you're doing it with that versus Golden Bullet or with none of them at all. So, you know, the, the specific things you're going to see in this gameplay here, don't take them too literally. You know, you're just going to have to go in and experiment for yourself a bit. Um, but in general, you should get an idea of what we're going for here. So you can see there's always four of them. And once you wipe all four, there'll be another wave that spawns somewhere out of one door. And that's why I was saying after a while you get used to where those spawns are. I'm not entirely sure where this one's going to be, but we'll see. So as you can see, pistol build, the idea is just kill them quick, get the headshots. That's what mine is built around. Again, might depend, might differ depending on what you do. And they're right out of this uh, manhole. So you can see, sometimes they're really easy spawns like that. And you can camp them really easily. And there'll be one more wave. There's always two waves of reinforcements on regular ones. I'm not even playing to the global event strength here because it's just... Super easy. And just like that, we got 500 and some thousand XP with those four directives on Heroic for, what, 30 seconds of gameplay. And so that is what I'm talking about when I say that these are really the most efficient way to do it. And if you want to prepare for the new update, you want to get that expertise level ready, do these as often as you can during this month when global events are active. You're going to get a lot of XP to be able to just save up scavenging levels to dump in when the new update drops. And you're going to get global event stars at the same time to farm those optimization materials to either use them now or save them up for the new update. And so you guys saw with that directive that I don't have ammo in my primary or I didn't before that because of Pistolero. I rarely even use this thing. You can once you have the ammo for it. But once you get in the rhythm of the pistol, it's really easy to stay with that. And then you can see I also have scavenge skills directive on, which means that when I throw the shield away or when you use a skill, it doesn't have a new merit cooldown. It has a certain amount of tickets you have to pick up. Um, from each enemy you kill and the shield if you throw it away before it dies then you just need one now that's really easy so let's say i just done that one and then you know i'm on the farm i'm trying to go quick well look i determined between this one is in a really easy spot we'll do this one as well before i sign off if i can catch them before they get too far and this is what i'm talking about and if you do this for a while you're going to get to know the different spawn points and if i can catch this one before they get too far this is like one of my favorite uh wants to do but they may be too far now shoot but you get the idea of how fast like that first one took me 30 seconds and if you get on these right away you can just keep doing them right after one another and really take advantage of the <laughs> crazy amount of xp they offer you this has been the method for a long while that people have used for you know a variety of xp related things in the game and so i definitely want to spread the message that uh it's more valuable now than ever so let's see if I get lucky when I kill this guy. If he goes to the spawn, I'm thinking, oh, no. Sometimes they'll go back in that corner, and it's really easy. Uh, but we'll do this one quick. So again, each time you take out the four, there's going to be two waves of reinforcements. And <clears throat> as long as you play smart and you're not, like, too aggressive... It won't be too hard. And again, the way I have it set up is headshots with Adrenaline Rush and Intimidate, so I'm getting those headshots up close. Gameplay will vary depending on how you choose to set up your pistol shield build in general.
And just like that, that's another one down. Also be sure when you kill the ads, you do have to go back and run over where they first drop their boxes, and that'll give you the XP. And it should be in the 500,000 somewhere. Yeah, 586 out of 700,000. So you're gaining like 70, 80% of a level per one of these that you do. And so sometimes they're a little finicky with how often they spawn. You can see we got another one up here, though. So you can really just keep doing it on a loop. And that is the general gist of the, um, the farm that I wanted to show to you guys today. So thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And be sure to subscribe with notifications on so it can be updated every time I upload. That's about it, guys. That is the farm that I wanted to present to you in order to, um, you know, best prepare you for the update coming next year. I truly think that if you want to be ahead, you want to be able to bump up those expertise levels as soon as the update drops. This is going to be a really good way to do it. Pump up those scavenging levels in your watch so that, um, you know, you can just start dumping materials into the... Uh, different items and gear pieces and skills that you don't use as much. And that way you can just level up through gameplay the, the builds and stuff that you like to use, and then you can just instantly level up everything you don't. And it should uh, ultimately equate to you having a pretty close to max expertise level not that long after the update drops. That's the idea at least. And again, TBD, we'll see how much the materials, um, the material cost is going to be for, you know, per upgrade. Um but it'll be really interesting to see. And I think this is going to be a really uh, smart thing to do in the long run. So in the months that we have, you know, whenever you get on Division 2, you want something to do. This is actually has a purpose. Um, and I think your time will be well spent if you want to do this. But that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope that was super helpful, whether you're new or a veteran. Um, just to give you an idea of what you could be doing in this time while we wait for the new content to come to the game. Let me know down below um, if there's any questions you have or if any uh, feedback you have on the guide itself. I'll be very curious to hear everybody's thoughts. All right, that's going to do it for me, though, everybody. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And until the next one, guys, Rogue Gold. Out.